was interesting. Vice Mayor Cruz. Present. Council Member Hewer. Here. Council Member Campion. Council Member Lamson. Here. Mayor Powers. Here. May I take a moment of silence for a prayer and then the flag salute? Would you please read the video statement? This meeting of the Galt City Council will be cable cast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel, on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T UVerse cable systems. The meeting is closed captioned and webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will air Friday, March 24th at 9 a.m. and Saturday, March 25th at 9 a.m. The City Council meeting videos are also archived on the City's website, www.ci.galt.ca.us. A DVD copy is available for checkout from any library branch. Thank you, Donna. Um, Council, any agenda approval, additions and or deletions? I'd like to pull item um, I-4 for discussion from the consent. Okay. Okay, now we're at presentations. Introduction of our new IT employees. <laughs> Good afternoon, Council. I'm Emily Boyd, Finance Director for the City, and it's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce to you two new IT technicians that have come on board with the City. First, I'd like to introduce um, Albert <laughs> first. Albert is a technology guru by day and a car enthusiast by night. In his interview for the position, Albert told us that he likes to read computer manuals. He has worked for the city of Stockton and he lives in Stockton. He is originally from Baltimore, Maryland. His hobbies include grilling, football, gaming, and traveling. His most favorite part of the day is going home to see his two amazing kids and enjoying the vast quantity of cuisines in the Central Valley. <laughs> Albert is a very friendly person and has a great customer service attitude. Welcome to the city, Albert. Welcome, Albert. And then Tyrell, this Ty. Tyrell, called Ty um, Gladney, grew up in Oakdale, California with his parents and twin sister. He has always been into technology and has been playing with it since he was very young is mostly a self-taught IT person and continues to teach himself and learn as much as possible. He has just recently moved to the Lodi area and is enjoying the change of scenery. Most recently, he worked for the city of Lodi. His hobbies include gaming and cosplay, and he regularly attends Comic Cons. I happen to know that he built a Ghostbuster proton pack that resembles the ones used in the original Ghostbuster movies. He attends charity events dressed in the Ghostbuster costume, when wearing the proton pack. Oh. Pictures, very, please. I <laughs> <laughs> has a very outgoing personality and great customer service attitude, and I think we're very lucky to have him at the city. So let's welcome both of them. Do either of you gentlemen have anything you'd like to say? This is your chance, you got the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here and work for you guys. We're doing our very best to take care of everything we can as fast as possible, and we just we really appreciate it. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Okay, public comment, please, Donna. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the public may address the council on non-agenda items. Speakers may address council on any agenda item during consideration of the item. Speakers shall restrict their comments to issues that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council and limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the Council Chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the clerk. And I do have one. Okay, one. Uh, oh, Dr. Kaufman. Elizabeth Kaufman, 
on Delta College. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's not even, <laughs> even it feels like Saturday already. Um, <laughs> good afternoon. I am very, very happy to be here uh, to let you know the latest in our efforts to recruit uh, Delta College to our fair city. Uh, we have just had our board of trustees approve an MOU with a Delta College to begin um, using four of our classrooms at the Marengo Road Estrelita site uh, next fall. We are in the process of opening their um, AccuPlacer assessment for our students and also for the community. So I have some players I'll, I'll hand out and uh, they'll have daytime classes, evening classes, general ed, you know, it seems to start within our, our, our initial thinking is, you know, based on assessing our existing current seniors, those students may be able to have classes created for them next fall um, based on their English and math scores at the very least um, mm -hmm. on the AccuPlacer this spring. And we're doing the same thing for our juniors uh, who will be seniors next year because our with our master schedule the way it is now, there's extra space in kids' schedules. So if we were able to do some sort of concurrent enrollment, um, I think that would help them get a strong foothold in our community and um, help us uh, be able to see uh, what, what might be a viable option for Delta in our down. So I'll pass out some flyers, just pass them down, and uh, I can answer any questions. Uh. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's a packet. There's a packet behind oh, it. Okay. I haven't been here for a bit. Sometimes I have to be retrained. Forgive me. You got it. Thank you. Okay, we're moving along to the information consent calendar. Uh, Lori, you pulled number four. Take yeah, it I away. Just, um, I just had a couple questions for the chief. Um, so, are the equipment that's being purchased with this grant will be will be restricted to to use for for the registered sex? I mean, when right, is it for because they have to come in yearly for a picture and and is it fingerprinting? They have to come in and get registered, and they get photographed every year or if they're transient every 90 days. Uh, okay. So it's new equipment to take photos and uh, enter them into, our, into the database. So the existing equipment that's currently owned by the city will be used for other purposes and these new equipment will be used strictly for the registry? Right, so what, norm, what we use is just our, stand, our regular computers and okay. uh, enter all the uh, information the system. We're gonna locate these computers uh, where we register the um, 290 registrants, uh, so it's easier access. It's just it's an additional computer in a different area of uh, our lobby for when we do register them. So are these offend are these the individuals that are on what's referred to as Megan's list? Uh, not everybody that's a 290 registrant is on Megan's list. It just depends upon their offense. So uh, anybody that resides in the city limits of Galt are required to register. And then transients is that. If they're transient, but they're calling Galt their home, they have to come in and register every 90 days. Oh, okay, 90 days. That's okay, that was all I had, and th you know, congratulations to uh, <laughs> the Lieutenant for applying and getting it. Yeah, they did a nice job and yeah. uh, assessed our needs that uh, some of our sh uh, shortcomings that we had on registering them, so they did a really nice job in getting that grant. Good, thank you. Okay, we'll just roll that into general approval. Lori, you don't want to do it by itself. Okay. Um, Donna, could you please read uh, everything that's on the consent calendar, please? Mm -hmm. Minutes of the regular meeting of March 7, 2017. Receive and file warrants for the period ending March 7, 2017. Amendment number six to the agreement for South County Transit link sharing of responsibility and costs. Item four, which was pulled for discussion. Award of grant 
2016 Sex Offender Registration and Notification Act. Item five, single audit, report fiscal year ended June 30th, 2016. Item six, approval of landscape maintenance agreements for improvements along the East Stockton Boulevard frontage. And item seven, approve a letter of understanding between Selectron Technologies Incorporated and the City of Galt related to upgrading the existing interactive voice response system software and to migrate to a hosted environment. Do I have a motion, Council? So moved. Second? Second. Been uh, moved by Mark and second by Lori. Call for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Cruz? Aye. Council Member Hewer? Aye. Council Member Lamson? Aye. Mayor Powers? Aye. Approved 4 0. Okay, where are we? All right, now we're down to City Attorney's Office. The subject amendment to clerk administrative employment agreement and salary step increase. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so we are asking to approve a second amendment to the clerk administrator's employment agreement. It would move the clerk administrator from a step four to the step five in the salary schedule. It is a 5% increase, uh, which is included in the current approved budget. Uh, the total increase would bring the salary to the step range of $7,905 per month with the total financial impact for the increase, including salary-driven benefits uh, through the current fiscal year of just under $3,000. And again, that is included in the current approved budget. And this is normal, what we do when we do steps. I just wanted to make sure that the, you know, uh, our constituents are aware that that's how we run our business. Uh, our yes, it is a, a, a normal process in the performance evaluation right. review. That we do for all employees. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Do so I moved. have a motion? Motion moved. Uh, uh, do I have it approved? Uh, second? Second. Okay. Moved by Lori, seconded by Paige. Call for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Cruz? Aye. Council Member Hewer? Aye. Council Member Lampson? Aye. Mayor Powers? Aye. Passed four to zero. All right. Now we're to the annual 2013 Galt General Plan and Housing Element Progress Report for 2016. Good afternoon, Chris Arias, Community Development Director. The item you have before you is the General Plan Annual Progress Report for 2016. Uh, the state requires the filing of this annual uh, General Plan Progress Report. The progress report contains the status of each General Plan element, the progress toward meeting uh, the goals and policies of the General Plan, and then also our progress in meeting the fair share of our regional housing uh, needs. Uh, the Galt General Plan includes 10 chapters or elements. Uh, they're listed on the screen, and each of these elements will have a set of goals and then specific policies uh, in each element to help meet that specific goal. Uh, in the reporting year of 2016, there were two uh, general plan amendments. That was the Dry Creek Oaks and the Eastview specific plan project, and those changed uh, the land use section of the report. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the report shows the progress toward implementing the goals and the policy. So this screen shows kind of a sample of what the report, or at least a part of it, looks like, where they show the general plan policy on the left-hand side, and then on the right, uh, the, our progress toward implementing each. So there are a handful of pages in the report that contain that, um, that setup. Uh, also in the report is our progress toward meeting our fair share of regional housing needs. Uh, the housing element is, has the distinction of being the only element in a general plan that's required to be updated on a regular basis, and the state will typically send out uh, the notices when that is due. Uh, we recently did that in 2014. And in the 2014 housing element, we were allocated 679 total units spread across the various income levels. So this chart shows our progress toward meeting those housing requirements. And as you could see, uh, I mean, it's a little tight, maybe it's better viewed in the report, that all of the production was in the above moderate category, which is our standard single family housing. Uh, so you can see in this uh, chart here how in 2014, we had 29 total single family permits, and then that incrementally grew through the last couple years to 134 of last year. Uh, the report also will highlight activity through the year. 
Uh, this screen shows uh, the Planning Commission activity, and it wasn't a particular busy year for the Planning Commission, but they did have the ability to work on some interesting projects, one being the Eastview specific plan, uh, the Cedar Flats project, and then also they approved the Starbucks ARCO uh, CUP. Uh, and this item went to Planning Commission at its meeting of this month, and they recommended approval of the item. Then there's also a section that just shows the city accomplishments for 2016. This shows some of those. Uh, you know, in addition to the projects mentioned in the Planning Commission report, it shows uh, you know some of the subdivisions we started construction, and then again the 134 single-family building permits. And most of these items, I, I think, have come across or either the Planning Commission or the City Council for approval at some point through the process. And that concludes staff brief presentation. If you have any questions, are you glad to answer what you have? Questions, Council? Are you anticipating more housing permits this year coming up? Uh, we are. We have, uh, in addition to the three subdivisions that are moving forward with significant numbers, there's still um, other maps that are ready to go final. Um, the one we're really anticipating, uh, well, hopefully getting started this year, will be the senior development. So if that one gets moving, I think they'll be aggressive in moving forward. So we can see uh, an improvement from the 134. Great. Great. Thank you very much, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh -oh, lost my page. Okay, moving on, uh, please, to... Um, Geez, we're down to the city clerk's report already. That was fast. Heck. This is an appointment by Council Member Lamson to the vacant position on Commission on Aging. We had an application received in the city clerk's office from Andrea Johnson, and I believe you've spoken with her. Okay, so it's your appointment. Yes, she's very active with Meals on Wheels and has a heart for the senior community, and I think she'd be a, a great asset to the commission. Okay, so you're appointing. So I am appointing her Perfect. for approval or whatever. No, it's just your appointment, oh. so you're you're good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're up, up to the appointment of Galt Shop, Shop Local <laughs> Committee member. At the last meeting, Council Member Hewer asked to step down from her appointment due to scheduling conflicts with the weekly meetings. Vice Mayor Cruz is currently serving on Shop Local, and so we're looking for one more City Council member to be appointed by the entire City Council. Uh, any volunteers? I would like to serve on the Shop Local. Okay, works for me. Uh, so do we have to make a motion for this? Uh, yes, please. Okay, do I have a motion to approve? So Just a comment before um, the, on the report, Donna. Mm -hmm. They meet eight thirty every night. Oh, okay, not eight o'clock. The report says eight o'clock. Eight thirty. Okay. It's eight thirty every week. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion to Good approve, catch, please. Sorry. So moved. A uh, second. A uh, second. A uh, call for the vote. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Cruz. Aye. Council Member Hewer. Aye. Council Member Lamson. Aye. Mayor Powers. Aye. Passes four zero. Okay, comments by staff. Emily? I have nothing further to add today, thank you. Chris? <laughs> I think, uh, well, we have a new HR person. I think Steve's gonna introduce him. Uh, yeah, I would like to introduce okay. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gene is gonna introduce him. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have uh, Steve Harmon join us uh, here for you know, a month or two until we uh, hire our permanent uh, HR director. Uh, Steve comes with uh, 40 years of experience in many different jurisdictions, and I'll have him uh, kind of expand on you know, the areas that, you know, that he's worked. But uh, in the last week that he's been with us, uh, you know, we've uh, you know, been uh, gaining his knowledge and experience and uh, helping us out in, in our HR uh, field. Steve? Thank you for that introduction, I, I appreciate it. My name is Steve Harmon, I'm serving as your interim HR administrator for a, probably through the end of May 2017. As the city manager indicated, I have 40 years of public sector human resource management experience. I served as director of human resources for the city of Livermore for seven and a half years. Prior to that, I was HR director for the city of Vallejo for two years. And I always like to tell people when I uh, tell them about my experience, 
it was not my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. We saw it coming. We did everything humanly possible to steer the ship down a different path and were not successful. Before that, I was HR director for about seven years with the city of San Leandro. And before that, I served two and a half years as director of human resources for Butte County. Prior to that, 16 years with the city of Stamford, Connecticut, where I got my start in human resources. Um, my, I own a, a human resource management consulting company. I have clients throughout the entire United States, and I recently engaged my first international client, which is the Ministry of Education in the People's Republic of China, where I do all of their human resource certification testing programs for them. Wow. I'm excited to be here. This is a wonderful organization, tremendous employees, dedicated, engaged, and uh, doing, I think, a, a fantastic job carrying out your policies and programs. You should be very pleased and proud of them. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome on a San Leandro girl, so welcome. <laughs> I love San Leandro. It's a great community. Uh, okay, moving right along. Chief. Well, first, I'd, well, the only thing I have today is I'd like to publicly thank uh, Councilwoman Hewer and the Girl Scout troops of uh, 980. This weekend, they took it upon themselves for to go and plant some amazing flowers in front of the police department. Uh, it's beautiful. Well, thank oh, you. Nice. Uh, yeah, really I donated really the supplies. That. The girls did the work. Well, <laughs> it was great. All I can tell you is that I keep getting employees from the police department coming in and saying, hey, did you see the flowers? <laughs> well, obviously, they're impressed. So uh, thank you very much. I, I, it, it was great. Well, good. We were hoping it would be a morale booster. Yay. It definitely is. It's, so uh, thank you. The, except for the... They're all drought tolerant, so <laughs> and, uh, they're beautiful. So thank, thank you. you, Eugene. Uh, just uh, one thing to report out to the council: I've uh, uh, become aware of the Sacramento County uh, has a grant opportunity through their uh, transit option tax uh, program. Uh, it's for economic development, tourism, arts and culture, sports facilities, parks, and community development. Uh, it's for uh, government agencies and nonprofits. It's something that I'm going to have staff kind of research and uh, report back at the next council meeting. The uh, deadline is April 14th, so if there's a uh, application that we may want to you know, submit for, um, you know, timing's a little, little tight, but uh, we're going to take a look at that and see if there's anything that we can do to um, you know, you know, put in for the grant uh, for our community. Great. Kimberly. I have nothing today. Okay. <laughs> I'll start with you, Paige. I um, just want to say I'm very excited about Delta College, and I don't know if Dr. Coffin mentioned it, but it will be free to the currently enrolled Galt High students. Well, that's very good. That's wonderful. Lori? So on, oh, I attended the GoToWebinar that was given by BBK um, on Public Records Act and private emails, and I think that all the council members should review that information. There's been some big changes. <laughs> I was also wondering the sexual harassment training that we're required to get. Have we picked a date or where do we stand on that? We, I believe our date is June 8th, June 8th. and we're having uh, two sessions, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and we'll be getting notice out okay. uh, to the staff and council members on that uh, training. Okay, I'm not sure that's going to... If it doesn't work, we'll figure out Yeah, one of the time emails that I received from one of the commissions, they wanted it within I'll have to look I, I'm not sure whether that's going to meet their timeline they were had I think they had us doing it I believe the email did say May but I'll be happy to contact them for you okay. and see if the June 8th will work okay. okay thank you Mark I have nothing other than it's nice to be healthy again yeah <laughs> I'll ditto that and with that I'll adjourn the meeting